Basic CES Workshop, Section 4. Section 4 has six activities, with the central theme of finding your way in CES using the navigation and search features. You will also create an estimate in Activity 2. It's recommended that you have completed the CES Workshop Fundamentals, Sections 1 through 3, before attempting this section. Let's begin. Activity 1. Locate your personal workshop folder. After login, choose the Estimates module to view the Estimates file tree. The easiest method of navigating the Estimates tree and locating your workspace is to expand the tree nodes by clicking the plus sign next to each location. Find your region, your park, the other folder, and the CES workshop folder. You should see your username. For the activities recordings, your username folder will be the representative folder. Your actual folder will be your username listed under the CES workshop folder. If you don't have access to EOS Explorer Extended, you don't see your username folder in CES Workshop folder, please review the introduction to the basic CES Workshop. Pause the recording now and complete Activity 1. Activity 2. We'll create a CES estimate and then use Quick Takeoff to locate and take an item off into your estimate. You begin the estimate creation by a right click on your folder, your username folder, just a right click and then thread through new and Timberline estimate. We use a template uh, by default when creating a CES estimate and the use of the template is beneficial. It, it provides some needed information and saves you the effort uh, of doing that yourself. However, there are, there are several required fields indicated with a yellow background that you will fill in. File name, of course, first. We'll just type in data search for our file name. And then the list on the left, the red asterisks will indicate the panes that have yellow backgrounds or required fields. Uh, you'll need to complete all these and clear the red asterisks before the estimate uh, creation process can be completed. So we'll go to main next. Under status, you can just use working. And take a moment to find your actual username, estimator username as it's listed in CES. And there are over 3,000 entries here. So the list can be quite daunting. And, and until you know how your username is entered here, whether it's first initial, last name, that sort of thing, uh, you'll need to, to scroll for it. There is a one, uh, one value, uh, one keystroke uh, jump feature here. I'll type an M to get started. It's not case sensitive. But from here, you can either drag or scroll to find uh, your username. It could be first name, it could be last name. Once you, once you find it, of course, you'll remember the form it's in. It'll be a little, little bit easier for you to get to in the next attempt. But it's an important field, especially for searching, uh, both for you and for your, your support staff uh, to help find estimates. Once you find it here, just, just drop it in. Uh, continue with cover page headings next. Again, we'll just use uh, the term data search. And in job classifications, these are, are required fields uh, principally for Maximo interface. We won't be using um, validation or we'll, nor will we be sending to Maximo. So just go ahead and put in the, the appropriate values here. For work order type, you can use unknown. Current data set would be good. And if you don't know your site number, any value will work for right now. 
but if you do know the correct uh, P code here, go ahead and drop that in as well. Now, by default, there'll be an open estimate checkbox already checked for you. So when you hit finish, the estimate will, will be created and open automatically. I will go ahead and click finish now. and you should get this result. The takeoff icons are listed here, starting with the simplest quick takeoff to the more advanced model takeoff. So as you move from left to right, you gain increasing order of power and complexity. Quick takeoff, item takeoff, assembly takeoff, and finally model takeoff. We'll use the first one here in activity two, known as quick takeoff. And when you click the icon, the database list is presented to you. It's exactly the same as an RS means catalog. It starts with a hierarchy of yellow folders we refer to as groups. You'll notice a group number here and a group description. You'll also see in your spreadsheet there's a column to hold that group number and that description. As you open a yellow folder, you'll see blue folders we refer to in CES as phases. And it's the phases themselves that contain the items. And each row here represents a row, the equivalent row in an RS means catalog. The, the row number is identical to the catalog and the description. And a right click would allow you to, uh, through edit item, access the data that's uh, also listed with that item number in that phase. So as you add uh, items from quick takeoff to your spreadsheet, you'll get the item number, the description, and then the contents of that complete item row from an RS means catalog. Let's go ahead and get a particular item here. We want to go to 0241 and we'll use the vertical scroll bar on our first effort here to find an item. You can just scroll down and look to 0241 here, demolition, and a double click opens. A double click also collapses here and we, then we want to scroll to 1919 so we'll, we'll use the page down feature. We'll scroll down to 0241 1919 and a double click opens that for us. Now we'd like to get to item 0800. We can continue to scroll or if you click once in the list to get focus and then type 0800, it jumps to the item that you like. So there's a jump feature here by phase item that again can save you time and be quite beneficial. We'll go ahead and, and just double click on the item. You'll notice that it's added to the spreadsheet. It has a blue background indicating that there is not a cross foot total yet. There won't be a total until we add a quantity. When you bring in an item, it always brings in the corresponding phase and the corresponding group. Let's look at your navigation choices here for takeoff. A click and then a shift click will select contiguous items. And if you double click or drag and drop, you'll get all the items you've selected in one motion. If you click and use your control key, it allows you to interweave. And again, a double click here or a drag and drop will bring in only those selected items. There's a collapse button to restore the tree to its collapse state. Also, you can expand the tree to, to see all the items at once. Now, scrolling in CES, because there, there's eight databases here, there's over 50,000 items available to you. So scrolling can be an effort. So here's some tips to help you along. You have an, an up arrow and a down arrow that clicks. You also have a button that you can drag. Now notice as I drag, watch the title bar here, upper left, and you'll see that the location, I'm, the button location will be displayed in that title bar right here. It'll let you, help you get to where you, to where you are. If you just slowly drag that down, you can see the location that you're going to end up in. Once you're close to where you want to be, if you've expanded and you want to search a bit more, uh, 
a great way to do this in CES is to use the page up and page down and that's clicking between the upper down arrow and the button so here's the button and here's the down arrow if I click anywhere in the scroll bar here it will page down and of course if I click above the button in the upper arrow tab it will page up for me pause the recording and complete activity 2 Activity 3. We'll locate an item using Quick Takeoff again, but this time we're going to sort not by phase item, we'll sort by description. Click the pull down tab here and choose description as the sort method. Now the list changes and the folder names become the first character in the item description. The sort list is sorted by special characters, then numbers, and then uppercase letters, and if there are any, there would be lowercase letters here. Sort by description can be advantageous if you know the leading characters of your description. A single click to get focus in the list, and then we're going to type the value emergency with a capital E. It's, this is a case-sensitive jump, and notice that as we start to get the text in, it jumps to the letters here. It does time out. If you pause too long between keystrokes, it reverts back. A little bit of practice is usually required here to get used to the search, but it can be very handy for you, this jump feature. We want to find the lighting twin, the 25-watt uh, 6-volt. A double click will add that to your spreadsheet here. Now to show the difference between the uppercase and lowercase jump, collapse your spreadsheet using the collapse button here and then type the same text string emergency using lowercase e And notice that it jumps clear to the bottom. There are no lowercase values here. So case sensitivity is important when you're using the jump feature in search by description. Pause the recording and complete activity three. Activity four locate an item by search. We'll start with quick takeoff again. We'll change the list to sort by phase item. Click the pull down tab, choose phase item. The list is restored to CSI 2004 and click the search button. Now this is a comprehensive search wild cards are built in they're inferred and because once again this is a rich field the description field is is large there are thousands of items in here we find it best if you start with shorter uh, text values start small and then add values as you discover the, the search results Start by typing lock set. Now search values are not case sensitive. Click the go button and all descriptions with the text lock set will return in the list. Now when you see the results see the type of descriptions you can get you can add values to that so type a space and then the word single click go again 
and now the descriptions that contain lock set single are returned to you in any order. It doesn't matter if the text string single is before or after lock set. As long as they exist in the description, they're going to return here. And we want to find 0871.2040 and we want to find item 1600. Once you've found your items, if you want to take a look and see what items are also listed here, click once to get focus on an item and then close the search. And you'll see that the entire values for all the items within that phase of your selected item will be returned to you. At this time, go ahead and double click on 1600 and add that item to your estimate. Pause the recording and complete activity four. Activity five, assembly search using the jump feature. We'll close quick takeoff and open assembly takeoff, the third icon on your takeoff ribbon here. Take a moment, adjust the pane, hold your shift key down, close the pane. When you open assembly takeoff again, it will open in that shape. We'll use the jump feature to find a specific assembly. You'll type D4010 and then scroll to 410. and scroll to 1040. Double click and the assembly loads the items in the assembly takeoff pane. Type 100 for length, 20 for width, leaving quantity as the default value of one. Click the add pass button. The assembly quantities are calculated for you. Look at the status bar. See that you're returning 2,000 square feet with a total cost and then a cost per square foot is displayed. Click OK and add those items to your spreadsheet. Pause the recording and perform activity five. Activity six, assembly search using the find feature. Once again, click assembly takeoff and find is accessed through the binocular icon here. So click the binocular icon. You're searching assembly descriptions. This search is not case sensitive. And type the value spread footing. Click the go button. When A1010.210-7300 appears, double click and that assembly value is returned. Double click again to load the assembly items. Note that the quantity is defaulted as one. Click the add pass button. Note that quantity is one, total cost of the assemblies returned to you, and then a cost per the quantity is returned here in the unit cost field. Click OK to add those items to your spreadsheet. Click Close. Pause the recording and complete 
activity six.